I'll be honest guys, I've been looking all day, and Panda's been right by my side, and him and I have been struggling here. Okay, Panda, I need you to find it. No, I need you to find it. Where is it, buddy? He gave up! Aha! Uh -huh. I found it! Not bad. I don't wanna know, baby. I don't wanna know, yeah. What's going on, guys? Welcome to Ponzi Gaming. Today we are gonna be covering Lost Castle, an indie game that is very good and under the radar. And before we go any further, now I know that this is the most cliche thing ever and you guys probably hate me for it by now, but I gotta say it anyway. Can you just hit the bell, subscribe, like the video for me? Please, I do it for you. I love you. Lost Castle is an indie game released in 2016 that seems to be the love child of Rogue Legacy and Castle Crashers. At least, that's the best way that I can put it. It hasn't seemed to have had a lot of buzz around it either, so this is the perfect example of a good game that's fallen under the radar. If you and your friends are looking for an extremely fun and old school co-op game, look no further. Lost Castle is a 2D retro style beat em up dungeon RPG with a roguelike and very interesting leveling process. You see, here's where the similarity to Rogue Legacy comes into play. In order to level up, you have to collect demon souls as you defeat enemies and bosses throughout various semi-random dungeon experiences. When you die, you use those souls to level up, then you start the dungeon all over again from the beginning. However, once you use the demon souls that you have to level up, whatever souls you have left over, you lose. So make sure to use as much as you can. The similarities to Castle Crashers comes in this regard, and that is the combat system. In the good old-fashioned beat-em-up style, this game gives you a lot of choices as how you want to tackle it. With over 150 weapons, each with different sorts of abilities, over 50 sets of armor that gives boost to specific combat styles. B -b 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 Stop. This is a family channel. This game really gives the player a great experience each playthrough. And again, let me emphasize this. Each playthrough is different. You will find different weapons every time you play, different armor, and every dungeon will be different for every run. There are three main combat styles that can be utilized in Lost Castle. Magic, projectile, and close range via sword, sticks, etc. Because we would be here all day if I went into detail about every item in the game, I'm only going to cover some important tips. <laughs> yes, the kindly stranger can certainly help. My recommendation when you start doing playthroughs of this game is to unlock each NPC who is, quote, behind bars in the starting hub. This will give you a lot more options before doing a run of the dungeons. The three NPCs that I'm referring to, of course, are the blacksmith, the thief, and the alchemist. This way, you're more likely to get the weapon you want, or at least a better weapon than what you start with, the potions you need, and possibly some good items that give you continual buffs through your journey. Not only can you unlock them and free them from their cells, but you can also upgrade them to have an even greater chance of getting better items and weapons. One of the other most important upgrades that I would also recommend getting as early as possible is the legacy upgrade. This allows you to keep some of the unused souls that you would otherwise lose after finishing your post-run upgrades. Lost Castle has five main segments to it. The Tower of Goblins, Bramble Courtyard, The Secret Path, Skull Dungeon, and The Main Tower. I have made it to the third segment of this game along with a few friends of mine, so I myself have not beaten it. And speaking of friends, in order to make it through the entirety of this game, I actually recommend playing it with friends. Now evidently my cycloptic colleague informs me that that can't be done. The game is a lot more difficult with just one person. You can have up to three players join you for a total of four. Between the many traps, obstacles, and enemies of each dungeon, having a partner really helps to alleviate some of the struggle that you would face alone otherwise. Due to the nature of this game, it doesn't exactly have a bustling story, so I'll give you the prologue, so to speak. Wicked magic has befallen Castle Harwood and the previous prospering land surrounding it. Demons have not only captured the castle, but they have corrupted the castle and the land. However, you arise as the hero who can save the land, and thus you are allowed to collect the treasures of the defeated Earl and attempt to save the kingdom. That's pretty much it for the story. This is mainly a gameplay driven experience, but in my opinion, it is as fun as it is challenging. I really enjoyed playing this game and I'm glad I played it with friends. And it's typically pretty cheap on Steam as well, so I do recommend that you'd go pick it up. I'm actually very shocked with the lack of love that this game has gotten. It is an extremely fun game. When I was playing it with my friends, I was having like a fantastic time. Gosh golly gee williger zimity jippity doo Batman! With every death, you start back from the beginning. And from the beginning, you always 
start with a different weapon as long as you've upgraded the blacksmith. So you're always having a different sort of playthrough as you continue through it. And you can make different builds as you go depending on what you do because you find items throughout each dungeon that you can then grab that suits you specifically. And if it doesn't suit you, maybe it suits your partner. And each experience was always fun. Heck, even when you would fight the bosses, it wasn't always the same boss every time. It could have been a different boss. Like, we were playing and we had discovered that the first dungeon had multiple bosses, even though it had given us the same boss like four or five times in a row on each playthrough, and then suddenly there was a different boss. The game is extremely fun and very well designed. I didn't feel it to be buggy at all. I didn't feel it to be boring. I was always having a good time. It's not every day that you find an indie game that isn't talked about very well that's actually really good. But this one is fantastic. I really recommend going and buying it. I cannot stress that enough. It's cheap. Half the time it goes on sale. Just go grab it. It's going to be worth the experience. And if you've got friends that like RPG style games, it is the perfect multiplayer experience. So make sure that you go and get this game. If you haven't already, make sure you smash the bell, subscribe, and like the video. I've got more content coming later this week. So you guys have a fantastic rest of your day. Bye. What's left of me? What's left of me now?